Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragalia Foundry. Amid a busy week in Dragalia Lost, I thought I'd pick a more low-key adventurer for this week's spotlight. It's been a while since I covered a wind unit and I wanted to see how this week's choice lined up against recent content. So today's video is all about Su Fang. Su Fang is a welfare unit who was given out for free during the Skyborn Spectacle raid for the Lunar New Year. He's a Pyroblossom artisan who takes his trade very seriously, and his full description reads, A Pyroblossom firework technician from the town of Pang Lai. A kind young man with a deep love for his home, he trains endlessly to create the finest displays possible. His talent also gives him the ability to manipulate the flow of mana. That's a snapshot of Su Fang's character, but our focus, as usual, will be on his gameplay performance. Let's start with an overview of his stats, combos, skills, and abilities. Su Fang is a natural 4-star wind element dagger wielder. Before augments, his max strength stat is 474, and his max HP is 722. These are the base stats as a 5-star at 50 nodes, but before any bonuses from equipment or the Halidom applies. Compared to other Wind Adventurers, Su Fang's strength ranks 13th out of 24, and his HP ranks far lower at 22nd. He's definitely a frail character based on stat spread, and Su Fang's strength isn't very explosive either. Having low base stats stings a bit, but more painful is that Su Fang is a dagger, and the basic combos for that entire weapon type aren't outstanding. Daggers do have the excellent critical rate co ability, and it's the third best co ability in the game for damage behind strength and skill damage on blades and wands, respectively. But besides their co ability, daggers tend to lag behind other classes and feel harder to play. I've mentioned this in past spotlights on dagger units, but the damage ratios and SP gain on daggers' basic attacks aren't the greatest. The preferred combo tends to be 5 attacks plus a 4 strike at the end, which you can reverse mid-air to ensure all of its hits land, something I'm still trying to master myself. The reason daggers prefer longer combos is because most of their SP gain is backloaded. Lots of classes are like this. All I mean by that is that daggers gain most of their SP on the final few hits of their basic combo. In Su Fang's case, his first skill charges after two such combos, and his second skill charges after around three to four. Skill haste doesn't benefit his sequence much, so unless you can reliably count on an archer being present, it probably isn't worth using on him. And regarding Su Fang's skills, well, they're alright. Gale Slice is Su Fang's main source of skill damage, since it's an attack that deals wind damage directly ahead. The damage ratio summed up is only 558%, though, which is very low. For comparison, Yudin gets 750% on his first skill, and Ramona can land over 3000%. These are different weapon types and elements, but hopefully that provides some slight sense of scale. The advantage to Su Fang's skill, then, is in its secondary effect. When Crackling Pyro Blossom is active, Gale Slice can stun enemies for 5 to 6 seconds with a 110% base chance. Stun is one of the more powerful afflictions, even though many bosses are 100% immune to it, including High Mercury and Void Poseidon. Still, completely locking down enemies for that long can greatly support the team when it does work. It feels fantastic to chain afflictions in Void Battle speed clears, and Su Fang can technically do this. Besides causing Gale Slice to stun, Crackling Pyroblossom, Su Fang's second skill, also buffs his own strength by 25% for 10 seconds. It's a short but sizable buff. There's not much else to say on it. Su Fang's abilities are similarly straightforward. Therion's Bane is what caught my eye for this week's spotlight, and it increases damage to Therion-type enemies by 25%. Manticores, Bison, Hounds, and Rats are all affected by this, and so is this weekend's Astral Raid boss, Valfair, who, of course, happened to be the boss back when Su Fang's raid event initially released. Some of these enemies can be really annoying in wave content, so I could see Su Fang popping up as a good team player in future facility events where those enemy types are present. 
For instance, he was fine in the A Wish to the Winds rerun. In theory, Su Fang's Bane ability allows him to flex on the strongest of Therions like Valfair, but I must admit his damage still didn't exactly blow me away in practice. I used it against the Greedy Manticore and Valfair in this week's gameplay footage, which I'll play in just a moment. But part of the problem in those battles was afflictions, which brings me to Su Fang's second ability. Su Fang has Bog Res of 50%. This isn't awful against Ty Mercury since either a Loan can cleanse him or you can carefully dodge until Bog expires 45 seconds into the match, then carefully dodge again after that. But it also doesn't help him much for anything else, really. It's not worth patching up Bog Res to 100% against Ty Mercury, yet for other content like the Greedy Manticore, where Su Fang would hypothetically be good, he's held back somewhat by the lack of both Freeze and Poison Res. My Su Fang is only a 4 star, but if you do decide to promote him, he can unlock a third ability, skill damage of 20%. This is a great ability in the abstract, but almost lost on a character like Su Fang. Even after such a boost, his first skill will still do less damage than Yudin's and many other welfare units. But I think that's enough harping on Su Fang's kit. My main question this week was how effective he could be against Therion's, especially since some new Void weapons released with Therion's Bane and Slayer's Strength. So as I mentioned earlier, I decided to test him out against Valfair and the Greedy Manticore. It wasn't my cleanest gameplay, and you can see my dagger play still needs some work. But once again, I wasn't super impressed with Su Fang's performance either. I'll let you judge for yourself. In the meantime, let's talk build ideas for our firework friend. Dragons tend to be the most clear cut, so we'll begin there. On Su Fang, you want as much strength as possible. Zephyr or Pazuzu are best, with the latter only being preferred if your team has a reliable source of poison. Long Long is another worthy consideration, and he's also excellent. The thing is, when Max Unbound, he tends to surpass Zephyr at between 21 and 22% critical rates, and it isn't exactly easy to reach that on Su Fang without some sacrifices. At max nodes, Su Fang gets 10% critical rate via his co-ability and has 2% inherent rate for a total of 12%. That means an extra 10% must come from Worm Prince, something Resounding Rendition alone can't achieve with its 8%. Thus, to meet that cutoff, you'd have to use Levin's Champion plus some other skill damage Worm Print. But at that point, you're also foregoing a Strength Print like Flash of Genius or Bonds Between Worlds. So, long, long story short, it doesn't seem to be worth it if you're really going for a maxed out Su Fang. Ultimately, it looks like Zephyr at Max Unbound would still be the best choice. On the other hand, if you just want a budget Su Fang build to fill out your team, Long Long is perfect. At zero unbinds, Long Long is actually a great dragon since his critical damage modifier starts out so high. Likewise, Rock is another budget dragon that's serviceable, plus she's easy to max unbind as a 4 star. Any wind dragon would ultimately be okay, just try to avoid pure HP dragons in favor of those who grant strength. Next up, let's talk Worm Prince, since we already touched on them in discussing dragons. In a sandbag mode like the Mercurial Gauntlet, Su Fang's best print combination is probably Resounding Rendition plus Evening of Luxury. This provides a mix of strength, critical rates, skill damage, and critical damage. The critical damage on Evening of Luxury is also put to use with both Su Fang's co-ability and resounding renditions. You could also substitute Flash of Genius for Evening of Luxury, but remember, using a helper resets the combo count in the Mercurial Gauntlet for your controlled adventurer. In a more practical setting like High Mercury's Trial, well, to be honest, the same print combination applies. Thanks to that fight's unique mechanics and the lack of unavoidable damage, Evening of Luxury 
archery is actually fantastic there if you play carefully. And even if you don't, a single low in or wedding on the sand can top you off easily. Once again, Flash of Genius is pretty good here too. There's little downtime for combos in this battle. Only in the more unusual context where I've taken Su Fang does his print selection start to differ a bit. For instance, Greedy Manticore has lots of pesky chip damage, so I didn't want to use a full HP print. Unfortunately, there's no Wind Affliction Guard print, as that certainly would have smoothed my run a lot. But that's enough about worm prints. Let's move on to weapons. Considering there are only three wind dagger units in the game, there's a surprisingly large arsenal available to them. In Su Fang's case, though, his preference is clear. Carl Snouter, the core five star wind dagger, grants him an extra attacking skill to use with his skill damage passive, making it the best all purpose choice in any setting, albeit the costliest to craft. The HMC Bane Dagger the Gale isn't quite as good for him against HMC, although it is cheaper to make. There also exist Wind Void Daggers for Whirlpool Res, Fury Penetrator, and Copy Punisher that Su Fang can make use of as well. But all of these effects are among the more negligible ones in Void Battles, so I can't say I recommend them very much. The only other dagger that catches my eye for Su Fang, and the one I used in my gameplay, is the brand new Mutter Fang. This has Slayer's Strength, making it good for wave based modes, and it also adds to Su Fang. Fang's Therion's Bane. If we ever get a wind facility event with a Therion boss, this would absolutely be perfect. But I have to admit, that's extremely niche. One bright spot for Su Fang is that his co-ability is still relatively uncommon and extra critical rates can help unlock the potential of his teammates. Kuhai is a standout companion for Su Fang because Kuhai has multiple critical damage passives locked behind a middling critical rate. Really, any unit running Long Long benefits from a Su Fang on the team, yet only certain units tend to look at Long Long to begin with since they can't count on daggers being there in co-op. One of those units, and the absolute best unit to pair with Long Long, is Lin Yu. She makes a good teammate for Su Fang, but, well, she's also just very, very good regardless of who she's teamed up with. His critical rate can help her, but it's not necessary. There are two other wind daggers that Su Fang competes with, Wedding Aoi and Francesca. The hierarchy pretty much corresponds to rarity here. Wedding Aoi can do just about everything Su Fang can and more, with him maybe having a slight edge against Valfair only, who isn't even a permanent boss. Wedding Aoi can take on Water IO and Void Poseidon, meanwhile. Her sleep works in the latter, while Su Fang's stun does not. She can resist the Greedy Manticore's freeze as well, and she has higher ratios on her skills even if some of the hits on her wonky S1 miss. Francesca is at the other end of the spectrum. She has slightly more bog rest than Su Fang, but that's not consequential in current content. She has multiple attacking skills, but their damage ratios are very low just like Su Fang's. Ultimately, she just doesn't stack up quite as well. And, well, that's about all I have to say on Su Fang, his builds, teammates, and competition. When this week began, I was excited to test out our Pyrotechnics Wiz in new content that seemed ideal for his Therion's Bane. Greedy Manticore and Valfair coming out in a single week made me think it was Su Fang's time to light things up. Ultimately, however, I felt Su Fang's actual performance was a little bit dim. Su Fang's kit has some nice properties. Stun is a powerful affliction, even if tolerances to it will continue to build up. And skill damage is a fantastic passive, but the whole is less than the sum of the parts, due mainly to poor percentages on his basic attacks and primary skill. Su Fang's damage output ended up feeling underwhelming. Even when using 40% total Therion Spain via the new Mutterfang weapon, I found units like my Lin Yu were just flat out better. 
Ultimately, I think Su Fang's niche may just be a tad too narrow to warrant serious investment. A flat increase in his damage wouldn't be unreasonable as a buff either. Perhaps one day we'll get a Su Fang alt that truly dazzles us. For now though, I think my Su Fang will stay on the sidelines preparing a stellar show for the next Lunar New Year. Of course, I'd love to know what you think about Su Fang in the comments below. Do you agree with my analysis, disagree with anything? Either way, I'd like to hear what you have to say. Otherwise, everyone, thank you so much for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.